Hi everyone, welcome back to our uh, channel and uh, welcome to uh, the Jansen Art Studio. Well, we're going to do a little bit, a uh, little bit different. We're going to bring some uh, color in here, setting up a light source, a light and dark uh, background to our light source here. We're going to paint you some very casual uh, styles of roses, and uh, this is all going to be part of our summer of uh, flowers and stuff uh, series here, where we're going to be, uh, you know, introducing some various different uh, techniques with you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here on a board. This is the board that I use a lot that I've been demonstrating with you for quite a while. I have a gray side here, and then I have a medium white side. This is just, uh, again, they're, all of them are made with black and white and a little bit of yellow. This one has a little more yellow than this side. And so I decided to use the warm side on this one today. I'm going to take my three-quarter inch fusion brush. I'll be using my Heritage uh, Multimedia here. Take the lid off of this one. Uh, and it's you have the limited colors, but I've added a few others on it. The heritage uh, links are are in all of our descriptions of our videos, and the, you can always go over to JansenArtStore.com or um, you know, Jansen Art Online and find all of the the acrylics. I use them global, which means I put them in these little caps and I meet, mix some extender in them. There's more about that on all of our websites and and all of that kind of stuff. We have lots of information, so you find it in all the links that go with the video. Okay, so. Let's come in in here and let's do some painting. I'm gonna uh, take some uh, brown or burnt umber here, a color that I don't use too often, um, but uh, it's gonna be kind of nice today to use some of this in some of the paintings. I'm gonna set up a shadow and a light side uh, to the painting here. So I'm gonna set up this as a shadow. So, you know, and a lot of artists will like use this really rough like this, allows some of the, you know, the, the movement and the modeling to come through into a background. And that does give a lot of interest to a background. And so we put the, the, the burnt umber here on just a little transparent, let this come out. You can uh, mix a, a little bit of white into that and, uh, Soften this color out here. Add a little extender to uh, to uh, get that nice and uh, softer look to it here. We'll push them. So we're going to do a lot with this. So this isn't the only thing we're going to do here. So and we'll warm this up. But we're just going to get some color on here first, and and set up a light situation, a dark situation, and then we'll continue our painting. We'll go a, a little bit more. Uh, in depth into this painting than I do in some of the other real quick ones. So we'll uh, give you a little longer lesson today in some of the colorings and stuff that we do. Fun to paint with the heritage like this. Uh, use it. I use it just like an oil. So many people think I paint in oils and they're always writing on their, you know, on the on uh, the videos and stuff that I do that I use oils and I don't I use acrylic now sometimes when you're when you're doing transparency you get a lot of these stops and starts here with the brush and so I just want to lighten the pressure these are the fusion brushes they're fantastic and if you haven't tried them you really need to they do so much great stuff and they assist that whole look of the oils so I'm gonna put some roses right in here and uh, to help that out I'm just gonna take some white here I have a little bit of this gray from the other color here. So I'll take some white though, mainly, and I'll establish, I'm gonna have a light colored rose right in here. Now I'm not gonna do the roses very big here today. I'm gonna to keep them just a bit smaller. So we'll push one right in there. We'll leave a little negative space out here, a little space between the roses. We'll push one off to this side. We might have one right up over there or so. I'm gonna darken it down slightly. Let's even cool it. Let's put a little bit of red violet into that here and uh, we'll drop it down maybe just a touch of the naplar red here we'll drop it right down and we'll come right in here and we'll push a rose here that's going to be going right behind that rose there okay and uh, maybe this other rose comes down over here off like that maybe a smaller rose heading off over here like that we don't know yet but that'll be a guess kind of a nice little setup of those roses there let's uh, come in Let's take a little bit of our pine green. This is nice and sticky because I like it. I like to let the paint stay out for a little bit and uh, uh, in the air, you know, in the open air, thicken up a bit, stir it every every few hours or so and get a little sticky and thick. And then I can thin it to where I want, but it, wherever I use it, it just kind of stays. Now I take a little pine green and a little thalo blue here. This creates a nice cool colored um, blue green here. That'll look wonderful playing against this brown down here. 
and I'll just create some some pulls and down like this it's some of this color coming down like this is back leaves and stuff coming out here maybe coming out this way you get just a feeling of some greens traveling through there let's push a little bit of that off right up off over in here um, so it gives me some greens and push some right over here I think what we'll probably do is take just a second and express our light source up at the top up here which I want to keep kind of warm into the yellow side so I'll take some yellow oxide some of that color there we might even push a little bit of that green a little bit of our brown and some of this yellow all into here and get this mottled kind of light color here green yellow and I like multiple colors coming in through here very close to the background there isn't it here and we'll just push some of this in this gives me some color to work into to soften my light effects and I love to pull down a lot you know to to get some of that light dark now I don't want to leave it just like that as a light dark I want to you know kind of turn some of this uh, let's get some of this burnt umber a little bit of green let's get some medium tone to travel up a little bit higher so I just don't cut that this board right in half light to dark I want to let's travel it up just a bit like that so we get that light color maybe coming right up here and uh, get a little bit of that right over here right into the greens here so I'm establishing a light here uh, into the painting you know we're artists we're artists of light and so you know this the light and dark that I'm putting on here right now is establishing the look here to our to our painting and I, I want to be able to do that so let's get let's go back up here to our, our pine green let's set it over here let's put a little bit of yellow oxide to it this will give me a, a really warm uh, yellow green and I can use that warmth right out over here push a little bit of that back there this might be a, a little bit of greens and stuff here into the background of our painting here that pushes back behind our lights we can put a few strikes of that and if I if I get real brave with it here and just put a few quick little hits like this so I don't deposit too much color then I'll get a nice traveling down of the there I hit some light and it's okay because I picked it up off the palette there but that's all right you let some of that little accidents like that happen and sometimes they're really nice there they they always say the happy little accidents that happen in the painting there so there we got some of those greens and some of that color moving there and um, let's keep that light you know some of that real light right up here moving through that painting there like that let's keep some of this right up here pull some of that through there that's kind of pretty right through like that there we go let's push some of that nice light color in there now so that gives me a good light to a dark right here we let some of this color kind of fade down here you know a little bit of those greens and stuff coming around down to that side that looks wonderful now I'm gonna go down to like a, a number eight here uh, this is my old old number eight <laughs> it's uh, painted so much but it's got paint just caked up here when you're painting with these fusion these are the fusion flats there's nothing like them because they're so soft and they do just such wonderful things and when you're painting with them and they get old and they get paint kicked up, caked up in it because I don't always take care of my brushes really well um, you know I mean because I paint every day all the time and so I don't always clean out all my brushes all the time I just poke them in a little extender and leave them on my painting palette and and sometimes if I don't get back to it right away they get it gets a, a little bit harder in the brush but uh, you know it's um, when you're painting with these fusion uh, brushes like that as they get old don't get rid of them they're they're wonderful just hang on to them because they're really great brushes and you can do so much with them for so long so don't ever get rid of them. I'm going to take my palette knife here, my painting knife actually, and push this off to the side so I can keep some of this under camera with you. I'm going to take some Napsol Red Light. Let's take some of that down. That's my nice warm red. I'm going to take my red violet here. This is out of the Painted Simply Basic set uh, and um, of the Heritage Multimedia. We have a basic set of six colors, and I do a lot of my videos, probably 
60% of my videos, I just use those colors. And I'm going to take a little bit of my green and kind of thin that up just a little bit. Make it a little creamy here, my pine green here. But um, anyway, we'll take some of that red. Let's cool that off with a little bit of my red violet here. So I get a color right between the two, just cooled off. It's got a little bit of that dirty brown in there because it's in my brush. And that's okay. And let's come in here and let's just establish what is going to be the center of that color of that rose there. Maybe push a little bit of the brighter red right in here, just like that. Just let it just kind of pull through and uh, really get casual. Let's, uh, let's come in just a little bit more now here. Okay, let's just kind of push this up and over and you can uh, see a good painting here. Okay, let's get some of this nice cool, slightly cooler here. A little bit softer, not quite as much... Um, coloring in it and that'll help this this one push back we'll get some yellow out here some yellow and some green and that uh, red violet here make beautiful soft colors the yellow and the green and the red violet and a little bit of that white see these beautiful soft little grays we'll use that into the the backs of this flower here this rose to set up back petals and we're going to open this type of rose up just a bit like that. Keep it very casual. And uh, push in some different little color hits here. Those different little colors are there inside the rose. Almost like a peony type of rose. You know, that's what I'm kind of envisioning here. I have some other ones, all kinds of other ones. And I have an entire series that I call Rose Portraits, which are really fun. And I've had just filmed a couple of those, and I'm going to add probably about 30 or 40 of them this summer during our Summer of Flowers. And uh, we'll really have a good time with that series. I'm just going to increase the volume and the depth of the color by hitting it quite a really thick color. And this is a, a, a I, you know, it's a kind of a, an error that young painters make is that they don't get enough paint onto the surface and of course I always want you to remember one thing you know we we're artists and we get interest through color and so the more color you use the more interest your painting is going to have so I'm going to create quite a bit of color and then I'm just going to push this color around here like this soften some of that out of the center just kind of push and just create some movement some I don't want to do it with really strokes I just want to create some movement around now Let's pick up some white. We'll gray that down. We, we will add a little yellow, keep that warm, maybe a little bit of our gray in there. So I've dropped it down a couple of values. We don't ever want to paint with just pure white. We want to save that for some of the other parts of our, some of the parts of the painting that need it towards the end. And let's just paint in real casual touches here for the front of this rose here. Just kind of push, short, choppy little strokes there. Just kind of push those into place there. Let's uh, grab a little more color here. And we'll pull down some light petals and movement here into that center. I will go back and restate some movement of that back out. So I get this movement into there. That's what I want to have. I'm just, I'm not going to paint on these types of flowers. I'm going to keep this very casual. I'm going to paint more for movement just pushing movement than I am anything else um, let's come out here use a bit of this and uh, maybe even point up some of the petals you know sometimes these roses get the nice some depending on the type of rose get nice little pointy petals out there I do a lot of rounded petal roses but you know there's all kinds there's some that get a little bit more pointy here and we want to show some of them as well some of that nice movement coming back in. That might be a little too pointed here. So let's just take that out like that. That's prettier. And create some different looks here. Here to these flowers, to these. And little edges here like that. So, and we undulate that rose in and out. In other words, that it's not always... You know, it, it, exactly the same. So maybe over here, I'll, I'll pull some out this way 
and uh, get some petals that pull in and out here like that. Um, I'm starting to get this a bit big, so I want to take that back in a bit. Let's reset that again, just not quite so far out. I don't want to get this rose too big. I want to keep these a little smaller. And if you're like me, I have a tendency to grow things, so i got to watch that a bit. And uh, let's come out here and curve some of this down here. Some of this will pick up into that shape of that one. Maybe down here. Let some of those um, greens and underlying colors. And that's the thing. You take a little green and a little red violet. Nice, cool, little darker color here. And hit the edges of that. So it makes it look like they, they roll down here. So you don't have uh, perfect little edges there. Maybe a little bit of red pulled out here. Onto this side to give that nice reddish tone to that part of the rose there. And um, let's take just a touch of the white, kind of pull that in and out there, there to get some of that in and out movement there, like that. Now, that's getting just a bit bigger than what I wanted it to do, so I'm going to reset that again. And, you know, anytime that, don't ever worry about resetting some things, because that, that really does do uh, nice, nice things for your painting. Don't worry about resetting or repainting something again. Let's get a, a little bit of red, violet, blue, some of that pine green, nice deep color here. Sometimes I'll go uh, black and yellows and get those yellow, uh, those uh, older um, bits of this, uh, you know, yellows and, and yellow, uh, uh, yellow greens. The oldest, the oldest kinds of your yellow greens are your black and yellows. Matter of fact, let's just use some of those. Let's grab some Hansa yellow over here. Let's grab a little bit of black. Hansa yellow and black. This gives you your olive green. Some of your older olive. The oldest ways to make those older beautiful olive greens, which are so pretty inside of some of these paintings. Because it's, um, it's going to be so much different than the other green that I used there before. So you get a, a lovely uh, painting of the tones and we can carry some of that right into the rose here, some of that tone right into the rose, and that'll be really pretty taking those colors in. Let's take some of that color right into this rose here, right in there, and uh, that's very pretty there. And we'll come back up here and just hit some of those lights, just light, just kind of short here, very thick paint. And short little taps of this, like little petals and stuff here. Little petal ideas there coming down into that rose. You can negative paint up anything too. Just pull down and, and, and create a little shadow petal in there. Push in and out a bit. Get some of that color pushing in and out there. All of that works really well. Let's just get a little color in there. Sometimes I'll pull and then just pull out like that. That's really nice. We got the light up here though, so we want to keep our eye on that this gets a little darker up here and we want to build these uh, light petals, light strikes back up onto this side a bit more. Just kind of pull some of those down and get the idea of a few uh, layers of petals and stuff going on and just movements here. And I'll push this in and out a bit, and that's where I get all that beautiful movement here. Push some of those colors in and out. Maybe hit a little edge, just a little light colored edge there. Let's push, um, let's go over here towards our grays. We'll push down to our grays. Get some of that light color down here. We'll push some of this right into this edge here. Uh, maybe, uh, bit uh, just you know kiss kind of push around push push the color around so you get some different uh, looks here or movements to the color and uh, that's what we want to do we want to create these roses with different kind of hits of color here what you wouldn't um, I mean very casual so they're not stiff little petals they're not the 
rounded perfect little petals that I do on so so many flowers here will keep them a little different the edges a little different and that's one thing I always try to do and I try to run up you know all different kinds of educational stuff for you by about painting and shapes and colors and temperatures and stuff and and uh, I also like you to see different ways to do things so here just by you know, just directing thick paint around so this is my light side here so I want to get real heavy here and I, I want to create some of the movement coming in here we're going to let some of that green stay there we want to put the, some of the edges there and I'm going to wipe my brush and just lightly with the fusion pull in like this and this will give some of that motion to that petal but see it makes a different kind of a rose there now um, I want to break up those petal shapes just a bit more and a little bit more maybe a bit of red in there too stayed it in there and pulled in and out here so we get some nice brighter red in there that will go with the other parts of those roses pull some light in there some light color maybe little corners use little corners of your brush to hit different things and create different types of movement there for those petals here there we go just like that that's a different shape to that rose here and uh, maybe this one comes out like that just a totally different one yet shape like that more pointed and let this come out a little dark and a little different shapes here let it get very lost here blur it back and forth let that edge of that rose become very lost let's build maybe just a touch more light right up here the front side of that now as I do that that's bringing that rose maybe a little farther forward than I want so I'm going to lift some of that out and that's all I do is I just lift this out and I still like that movement that's in that rose there I'm just going to lift some of it out here let's get a little bit more toned red a little red a little green Let's push that around, get that into that rose side here. So I get some of that red and push it around. And when I paint like this, I, I like to work these colors a lot. So let's maybe even put a little yellow back in here. A little bit of that uh, olive green back into this part of the rose here too. We'll carry some of those colors and we'll get that warmth and stuff back here that's kind of nice and carry some soft little looks there little strokes little petals see how that looks here try to uh, apply that a little softer there let's uh, push this up and down a bit get just a because I'm gonna put some lighter color on it reshape that rose well that means if I'm gonna leave it this light though I've got to, because uh, I got it a little bit light. If I'm going to leave it that light, I might take some of it down. I'd have to lighten up the other one or take this one down just a touch. Take some of it down. Take some of that light off of that and see how that softens it a bit. This light here will soften that a bit. Look at where you are. Push that color around so you have some movement of those petals there. And just don't get the others, uh, don't get that quite so light there. Let's get a little softer here to our color here inside of that one a little green on some of the reds here let's gray this down this beautiful gray here let's gray that down soften this one down a bit more still painting for movement so everything that I'm doing I'm watching some of the movement here and setting it and sometimes it you know it takes you a while and this is what I do it takes me a while to kind of find the shape of this rose and you may have liked the other shape and but I I know I can do a little more than that so I'll push this back and sometimes if you can't see it move on to something else there for a few minutes I see this one I know where I'm gonna go with it now but I want some of that nice olive green in there and hopefully the camera is picking up some of the different 
colors that you see. I don't want a rainbow, but you're picking up some of these really beautiful little colorings and stuff like that in here. And we'll create a bit more of our dark coloring there. That's kind of pretty, that coming through there. Now, let's get our, let's lighten up our gray here just a bit. And uh, we'll push, we'll look here. That'll be that little edge of the rose right there. We'll soften that edge out there. And uh, maybe push to the petal out here, which um, we'll do some negative painting there in a minute. So I'm going to leave the rose a bit softer for just a second as we paint this. Here, we'll leave that. Yeah, that's kind of pretty. So you see, they're, all of them are really kind of nice roses. It's kind of like what's going to fit into the, the uh, movement that we want to have here and the feeling of our painting. And I'll know that more in just a minute when I put some of these other stuff going on. So maybe I'll, I'll leave that, but I want to get a little bit more of a shadowy tone here coming through, pulling that out. Maybe just some hits of some of that light hitting out here. And we'll do some negative painting, some edge painting on some of that to push that in. You can go, you know, sometimes I'll just drag this out like this. And that gives you this blurry edge here, but that will negative paint up and in. Let me show you that real quick. So you take some of your, your darker. Let's take um, some green and some blue. Here, thalo green and blue and a little bit of that red violet into that to cool that. And you can use the edge of this darker green, which is our shadow, to come in and, and use that to shape the edges of this leaf. So we take out this petal. So we take out some of the edges here that we don't need backwards here and use those this kind of softly pulling out like that to really paint the edge of the petal there of that particular flower. So, and that works really nice. Now, let's uh, get some other darker some blue and uh, red violet that nice purpley dark with some of that green in and let's get some nice dark contrast right up here especially right where it's going to go and that other one there that's really creates the contrast here of the painting let's get some of that little dark right in through here and that allows this because of what we call simultaneous contrast here Getting that dark over here allows some of the other, um, this side of the rose to actually be a little darker than what we um, we have there now. Let's uh, leave that for just a second and come right down in here. I want to have some of this red. Let's use red and some red violet here. Let's push this yellow, or excuse me, this red rose here. Let's get a little more red violet into the center of that. Nice, darker rows that we'll do here we'll um come right right up here let's gray into some of this color and let's just push that around here to create this almost peony rose type of, of flower there like that okay and um use like the corner here we'll let it come up into the light here use like its little corner here and Kind of push this rose shape around like that. That's kind of a pretty little shape here. So it picks up just a bit of that. Um, maybe that's a, a bit bright, so I'll push some of that back with some of the red that I want to have in there. There we go. So it sits down just a touch. Nice little uh, light pink here. We can get a Nice little light pink kind of petals there. So everything on this one will be a little darker. And then we'll let it kind of get dark and still heading off to this side here. And we'll do a little negative painting in that one. Here maybe hits a bit of that nice yellow here to pick up some of that uh, other tone. That's pretty. And... Um, and again, we can even touch into a tiny bit of our black into some of this to uh, really get those darker tones here down on this bottom. 
and we'll paint every once in a while also back with our burnt umber which we had down here which was our warm now we're going to start to really build some nice color some depth of color down over here and that really lifts these flowers off and there's you know i can't stress enough that you use paint you use paint to to get these uh these flowers here to give them their to lift them off i mean that just gives so much interest there to lift these flowers off of this painting let's take some of this dark Let's push some of that dark right down in here onto this shadow side of this rose. And really push this shadow side a little darker here. Maybe just lose that whole edge a bit more there. And uh, get some of that red. Let's get some of that brown and green in that as well. And really lose this edge of this flower here. Coming down on this side. See how much... And, you know, some of this times, you know, after I get this other one on, you start to see, okay, maybe I want to lose that just a, a bit more there. Use a corner here with some darker color. Push that in. That's contrast. And then I can wipe the brush and lift a little bit of that out here and there. But that creates a, a little bit of that contrast there for, like, the bowl of that rose here. And I might want to just push some of that back in there. So you see a... But seeing a little bit of that bowl is a good thing here. Pull some of that out. Just little little hits of color. You know, find the tone. Find one that's a little soft here and just do a little hit of that color here. And uh, maybe put a little dark and just take a little bit of that out. And you get a nice look to that rose, to that, that edge there. That's kind of pretty. We'll drag a little bit of our light and some of this gray right here. Maybe just a bit of that light here. And uh, create the edge of this rose, which, um, you know, we might want to bring up just a bit more like this so that it is going to come up in front of these other roses here. It's going to be the main rose. Let's put a little red and green into this and just kind of pull that down to create that bowl here that we want to have on that rose. Maybe a few more little light hits. Take the white, hit it in with some yellow and some and color here. Take it down just a bit so it's not pure white. We try not to paint with the pure white here. Okay, so we'll soften that out here. Okay, and I'm just going to push some of this around here, this back side here, just to soften it down a bit. And uh, get those colors working together just a bit. Sometimes I just use the brush like this. It's nice. Just that you still get the color, but you don't have quite the impact of the edges, so it softens everything out. We'll soften out some of those edges there. And um, again, let's work in a bit of that nice shadow tone there. That's pretty. Let's work in a little bit of our light here into that petal there. That's pretty there. Here, that down in there like that. That kind of pulls that rose kind of forward. But um, let's... let's uh, Get back into this shadowy side here. We're developing that a bit. I want to develop it like I did this one, but not quite as dark. So we just push this all in here. Imagine where that shadow side is coming there. And pull some of this out just a bit like that. So we have that saddle sh shadow side developing there. Not the pure white, but pretty light here. Let's go back and restate just a few little hits of that here. There we go, just like that. So we'll have the feeling of some of that shadow there and this pulling out like that and these coming together. Maybe this one is going to sit up on top of it. So we'll push just a bit of that right there. Coming up on top of it, maybe gets a little hit right there. And that right on top of it. And uh, 
and we'll hit the light petals that might be there. So it gets a, and we'll use just a touch of that rounding down here. And then it's going to disappear as well here, down that side there. That's pretty good. So you get a nice light, see? And we'll hit just a bit of that light, like right here. Push that in and out just a touch. That's kind of nice. Maybe a hit of that light even with that one. Here. There we go. Little movement of that. Those, those are kind of pretty down there. Like that. Let's get this one here. We'll push some of that red. We'll head towards that red violet a little darker. With a bit of that green into that, that's this one's going there. Let's get a like a little rosebud or something off here, here maybe here, and um, let's get a little bit of our red. And you know, I have that quinacridone too, which would be a pretty color on this, and pretty pretty coloring in there. That's kind of pretty, just like that, and then we'll. Uh, Use a little bit of light. We're going to keep this one out and softer here, fading down to this side here, like that. That one's coming back. And, uh, you know, it's I started that one out up there with just too much white, and that's the problem, you know, and, I, and I've just slowly worked at getting the white out of there. And, uh, you know, so here I'm not going to touch quite so much, so much of that light, that white, and uh, if you put anything back in here, like maybe there's some reds here, like there's something else down there, bury it with a little bit of green color in there. Those are pretty. Let's step back now just a bit. Get that light direction here into the painting. Let's get some of our greens together here. We'll take this and we'll lighten it up and look at our where our green is. I want a kind of a nice green here. Um, I can, you know, desaturate that, tone that down with some of this red, which is perfect for this painting, which is what we don't. So we don't want a super bright green here. And let's come up here. We can use that to help shape some of these back petals here on this rose here. Maybe this is going to just fade that edge right there like that. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. And, um. We'll shape this up into a leaf here a bit. So let's just kind of jagged the edge, pull up to the point, pull in and around like this, all the way around. And then I like to just take my finger and I like to pull through like that to, to soften that light source to one side and maybe hit it just a bit more right like that. That gives me a, that's a pretty good color for that one there. Let's add just a touch more green Maybe put one in right here that's just a touch more green here. And we'll pull through on it just a bit. Maybe give it a little idea of a um, vein line there to sh slide that um, that uh, leaf petal there, you know, the, the leaf in and out a bit. Push some of that uh, flower into that green and it gives you a nice transparency there to that flower. That's a beautiful green for that as well. I like that red violet into these greens and then lightening it with a bit of the white because it makes those beautiful kind of soft grays that are real pretty. Let's get a, a touch of yellow into that too as we come up here to our lighter, warmer side. Get a little bit of green and a little yellow oxide, a little white. It's all grayed down with these reds, desaturated. We, it's you know, taking away its intensity or desaturating the color with some of the the greens and the, because our background has so much of this green it works so well and let's just take some of that shape off of that there that's really kind of pretty we might set come back up here um, let's go just a touch darker here and reshape some of this in on this side here that's that negative painting that helps me shape a rose that I like to do and um, let's get that, and let's get a little blue in it, 
a little bit of our red to darken it and a little bit of that blue to get it to the blue side here a little bit of that red to desaturate it cools it red violet will cool it and just get a, just a touch of that right in there like that maybe an edge of that right in there you'll see some of that green and red coming together and because I want you to look up here real close see because of all of the paint I'll show you that's the difference in a lot of the paint see that beautiful coloring that's coming in there that's working from all of the colors that I've been using in the painting now they're kind of coming together here still have a little bit more of the uh, I shouldn't do this yet I should go back to my leaves but I, I just want to push a little bit more of this in and through there and up and around some of this red up and around so it's just not isolated down into that very deep part of that center so some of this comes out maybe even a little bit more pink right up here so some of that comes out and just push that around and just tap it in with your finger because you're in with that thick whites and uh, that'll just create some of that nice movement in there and it looks great get some of that color going in there it looks great get some of this toned green red in there like that just push that around a bit there it's really thick and so I'll just take out have even green in my brush here and I'll just brush out with that and that'll help desaturate it here and I don't mind some of those colors hitting off and coming out there like that that doesn't doesn't bother me that's pretty good actually that looks kind of nice with that little streak setting up above it there all right, let's get back up here. Get those, get this color grayed down here, see? Let's put that right up here. Get that color grayed down like this. Let's step back just a bit. Okay, and uh, we'll use that to, uh, we'll come out here with a, it's a bit dark, so I'm going to lighten that up a bit. Maybe right over towards these yellows. That's better. Come up and around change the change the angles and change the, the colors a little bit on your leaves there's some nice nice coloring there let's um that's kind of pretty there's so um let's come in here drop in like there's going to be a red one right back behind here back behind these leaves some of that reddish color coming in there and then we'll just take some soft whites, push that in like that. There's one right back here and it's coming in and sitting back behind there. Maybe it gets just a little bit of that brighter red because you're heading up towards that light source. So maybe there's a bit of that brighter red back up there with it in conjunction with it there. And a uh, bit of the light as that's coming right in there then we'll set those leaves right back up on top of it there here that'll sink it into back behind there and that'll be pretty there like that and um, it's gonna be uh, really a lot of fun this summer painting the, the summer flowers that we're gonna be doing and the uh, also painting uh, some of the rose portraits. I plan on, you know, doing all different kinds of varieties of roses, and painting them according to their to their species and stuff, and, and and doing portraits of them. So I just started some of that, and I really like how it's coming out. They're a lot of fun. And I hope you join me on some of that. I'll be doing some on our YouTube channel. I'll be doing some in videos and books here. And they're, they're really a lot of fun to study some of the roses and shapes and everything that you have with some of these beautiful flowers. We'll just take some of that out there like that. Look at that. See how it just kind of cleans that edge up a bit. And um, let's get that blue and green and some of that red violet, that dark color here. Let's just clean up this edge just a bit here. Some of those colors. Maybe take a strike of some brighter green and just come through there just like that. Nice thick green paint and 
and it does create some movement, a thick color movement in there. That's all I want to do. Um, you know, I might even put a stroke of a yellowy green or so right in there as well and pull some of that out here so you pick up a touch of it and and uh, let's get some of those yellow maybe maybe even some of this nice toned kind of red green this uh almost like a real soft uh gray red here and use that for some whispery leaves as well that are just kind of ghost they're just kind of there just a little bit different than your background here that's kind of pretty out to there yeah and we should do you know a few touches of those like lighten it up get, get some yellow in there and lighten up a, a bit of it here and having some lighter yellow hitting some of those um those leaves maybe a little bit lighter yellow green you might even go to that Hansa and pine green with some of that white there now that's dangerous it's a real bright green and it's a little dangerous color so be kind of careful where you hit with that but you pick up some of that here in those areas and let's just shove this over just a bit here that's very pretty and uh get some of that coloring out here pulling out through there maybe a bit pulling out through here pulling down working that just giving some green movement that's all I'm doing here push that in and out to give that lost edge of that rose there on the bottom some green movement pulling out that helps every once in a while you know get back to that real dark and you put on those real spot darks that just create so much contrast but they're really great you know here I'll just pull that that green out there like that just pulls that movement out you know maybe we'll have a different type of green coming out there like that and we might, you know, you might set up a, like a little bud color or something like that. Just really soft coming out here. Maybe there's one back behind there. Just paint it as an impression of something. Light color coming back behind there like that. Something it's just right out there in the back. Maybe give it a, a light petal edge or something like that. And then let the viewer decide is that turned or whatever. You don't know. They don't know. They just kind of pick up that color maybe a bit of the red on it and push that through there's one right in there and what is that it's just color movement and it could be a one that sits back behind all of those those leaves and stuff out there and that's what makes them fun you know you we put a little bit more uh, of a light green stroke here. That'll push some of that back behind there. I like that. And get some of that light green stroke right in there. Or like the edge of a leaf. You can add a little white to that light green. Let's get a little bit of Hansa, a little bit of yellow oxide here and some of that green. Maybe give a bit of a lighter edge to some of this leaf here which is you know actually heading towards some of that light maybe up by the tip of that one here so you can start to get some of that highlight lights up there as it's going to be up there and uh, pull some of that green down to so it doesn't complete those blues don't completely outline that part of the the rose over there pull some of those leaves out here pull that color across over here not quite as light but pull some of it out over here so you get and then maybe a little bit of that blue shadow there's a little hit to that here 
Sick, sick, sick paint. That's what I'm painting with. Sick, sick, sick paint. Some of that color coming out. Some of that color coming out there, like that. Love it. Some of that dark here. Right in there. Maybe a bit of those lighter little green stroke there. A little hit of that. Some soft. You know, just a dirty, almost a brownish color. Your green and your red make kind of a little brownish color. Take some of that color out. And it carries that color out. See, it carries that color out here. You know, a few little strokes of that. Just some nice movement here through. It just gets that color out there. And uh, might have a little hit of some brighter green. So I'm just varying the colors. I'm thinking, though, my light. So, you know, I'll have a little bit lighter colors, lighter greens hitting up here. Some of that. And uh, just, you know, very casual. Just kind of hit your brush. And, you know, the biggest thing, and, you know, I, and a lot of people always say is, you know, it, it's... It's hard to do it, and yeah, you have to strike it with a certain amount of confidence, which means you have to approach the entire painting with a certain degree of confidence of, I'm just going to do this. And, you know, it's um, confidence shows in your strokes, and confidence is going to come from just sheer repetition. A lot of people say, well, how do you get that? And that's, it's just painting it over and over and over again. And in the channel, like in my YouTube channels, I've been working uh, and showing you faster painting, some 30 minutes, 20 minute compositions. Uh, you know, I, and like I say, I do four of those, at least four of those every day just to paint. And more than anything else, they're, what they're doing is they're giving me confidence as an artist of rep repetition, repetition, repetition. And um, that's what you have to do. And some people say, well, I don't have time. Well, then you won't be able to build as fast. You can still build, but you won't be able to build as fast. If you want to get there, you have to practice it. You know, some people are naturally uh, blessed with the ability to see and paint like that. I'm not. It's something that I've worked on my whole life to get there. Now I can. I'm not where I want to be. I still have a long ways to go as an artist. And uh, I've got a lot of things I want to try to paint still. And, uh, but I'm having a great time. So there I'm just putting a little more color. See, I'm pushing it in. As the heritage begins to tack, now see, this is all, we're, you know, 50 minutes into the painting. This is all still really, really, really wet. See that? That's the heritage, how wet that heritage stays with it. But I like it to start to tack up a bit. So when it starts to tack up, then I can pull through like I just did there and create some other little movements and stuff. And I like to do that. And I always like to, at towards the end of a painting, I like to come back and I like to revisit my center of interest. And this is where I start to hit just a little bit more to the white side. And I'll look as to where I want to have those final little lights, you know, of the painting. And I'll do small little, little touches of light and hits of those. And I want to build up this front part of the bowl of that that rose right there. Maybe hit a few of these little light petals in here. Just to touch more of the light coming into some of those areas here. Right in there like that. And uh, let those soft ones go there into the back. Maybe a little edge. Sometimes I'll come in and just hit the little edge of a petal back there. That you know gives just a, a touch more a shape and stuff to it and don't always do it sometimes I do and uh, they're really kind of fun here let's push just a bit right in there there I like that and it's really kind of pretty I like the the colors of this one kind of working then I'll just tone this down just a touch and maybe hit a last little bit of the light here up onto uh, this area here Maybe round that corner just a touch like that. And I can round that flower out like that. Well, like that, we'll hit this edge here a bit, just a touch more. Final little lights. Just little hits of them. And that just adds so much. I'm going to let that one stay really soft. 
maybe a bit into the lighter pink here right in here hit some of these edges here on this one here there like that I don't want I don't like that line that I want these almost like peony type roses here so that they uh, there we go and this one more is a more of a bud type of shape maybe a petal that's just beginning to open up here and uh, might hit the light just a touch here so I'll just kind of do that and then maybe give a push it back into its round shape with some red here let that green and stuff come in there just push that back and forth so I do a lot of painting by pushing all of that thick color that I have in there and that does a lot of my painting for me a lot of my painting get a little bit of green and black in that red real a little bit of blue in there too another little, very very dark 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 color and you can use that in some deep shadowy areas to really uh, again just little deep shadows that just help create that that nice depth let's take a um, let's take a toned yellow green here some black into that get that olivey kind of color just a little toned a little red and stuff in it to help that and uh, let's give just a few little uh, ideas of some stems here coming through just quick little pull downs like this and, and break some of those leaves off like that and uh, kind of pull those out there just like that that's what really kind of nice maybe uh, you know you can uh, push on a idea of a leaf or so here let it run into those reds and that makes it uh, look just like the uh, you know the young leaves which are more a little more orange there and that will run right into that red shape there that's kind of nice and push some of that right out like that and there you have kind of a nice you have to decide you want to you know reposition this light let's step back just a bit here I could have some more of that light I have that light coming right down through here one of the things I, I like to do and you see me do it on several of mine uh, of my paintings I come back and reposition that light. I really like that warm kind of umbery color down here too. Let's take a little, let's just add some of that uh, back down. That umber, some umber, maybe a bit of the red of that umber, burnt umber. A little bit of red or so into it. That burnt umber is just so pretty. And look at that nice rich color it gives down here towards the end of this composition here. And I put some of that in here. And a few strokes of that just a little heavier here look at that beautiful coloring here that's nice you know and you might you might push some of that right in here like that and push some of that in and out here you know through some of those that areas there just really pretty 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 coloring little dab of it to hit right back in here as it's going into some of those greens and stuff look at what it does that negative painting to that edge there will soften that edge just a touch maybe not quite so perfect but just a bit here some of that up there some of that burnt umber just hit right in there such pretty color maybe a bit of that touch of that right in here in between those it's such a it breaks up that green so it's not quite so solid there pull some of that out there gives a nice coloring that's a nice coloring in there a little bit of it right in there and uh, then let's go up here to some of our lights let's reposition some of our lights some nice light yellow green some white let's add a little extender to it that's going to thin it out and um, let's get a, a warmer brighter too let's get a little Hansa into that warmer brighter We'll be somewhat careful with this somewhat <laughs> and uh, put some light in this and 
There we go. Some nice light into this going down. And you see me do this on so many videos. I like to pull this down and in and blur those together to give a, a better light direction through my painting. Sometimes I, I'll just pull right on down into the edge of those roses and stuff and just kind of blur those in like that. Now, I don't want to leave it too streaky, but I want because that can be distracting to your flowers. So, But we'll get a little bit of that light coming through. And that's really pretty. And I like to do that towards the end here. And just pull some of that through. Makes a real pretty, pretty idea for your painting here. Let some of that. And if I, I did like that brownish kind of color pulling through there. So I might uh, restate that here. Just a nice casual brown, brown, green. Just kind of pull that right through. So... I can come back even into this light and just kind of state a few little things and movement and stuff once I have some of that done. Just kind of push that in and out there a bit to uh, create that movement one more time or the edge of a leaf that I want to develop up a little bit more or keep here. And uh, yeah, that works there. And let's get this edge of this one defined a bit more that one just kind of grade through there and so like that one bothers me a little bit there I just take it out a touch just take out a little bit of it and maybe we reset it a little bit movement right out over here and that's better so I don't get that leaf interfering with that uh, other one that's there and maybe uh touch of the dark right here just a little bit of negative painting there kind of pops out the beauty of that rose let some of those edges block there second now that rose just really sings let's get a just a bit of that brighter green maybe right in here break the edge with that rose so that edge is not perfect kind of broke break up the edge so in other words, drag it so it gets a little lost, a little faded. It's not a perfect outline there. I'll zoom in there. You can see that. So this is what we're, we talk about uh, when we're talking about a uh, broken edge, like right in here. It's not perfect. I got a little bit of a perfect edge there, but then it lost the edge. So we call this a found edge. We call this a lost edge right into there. And so when you're painting flowers, especially when you're up and around in here, so you got lost edges back here that you just kind of push through like that and that really uh, aries up the flower quite a bit and you just push your color around and that's what's really nice about the heritage heavy pigmented acrylics you can push them around like that and not lose completely lose the shape so there you have some pretty um, little roses here with some uh, different kind of light source and stuff like that with that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun painting with you. Build and build and build. And like I did on that second rose, when you kind of get a lose that shape a little bit, don't let it worry you. Just build it again. Set back to your overall plan, which I wanted to have light inside and a dark side and those beautiful warm umbers down there. Get back to your plan, get back into working that and everything, and then go from there. Now, if you want to follow us on some of our uh, other uh, videos and stuff, we have videos that we do that are just pure teaching videos, where I even do a lot more teaching. I do a little teaching here, but I do a lot more in the other teaching videos where we talk about the temperatures and the warmth and cool and everything, and we take you know, more of our time. I have more time on some of our educational DVDs. Go over and watch it. Go over and look at some of the, the videos we have on the JansenArtStore.com. You can always visit on Amazon. Our videos are now being picked up and carried on Amazon, so you can watch those. The products and stuff that I use here are uh, all on Amazon, and they're all in our store, the fusion brushes and the uh, acrylic paints, the heritage acrylic paints, where I'm, and the extender medium I mix up. Now, that extender medium, a lot of people just say, oh, I'm just going to grab that and grab it and put it in the other acrylics. No, don't, don't, do the, don't do that. These acrylic, not all acrylics are the same. They don't work together the same. If you want to paint, and if you want to paint properly, I suggest you get to tools and you learn properly. Taking shortcuts and stuff is not always the greatest way. It just increases the frustration. And we like you to be successful. That's what we... we 
That's why we give you all this type of information. We want you to be successful more than anything else. So if you enjoy it, do me one last favor and hit that subscribe button down there. When you hit that subscribe and we get more subscribers, YouTube will push our videos out a little bit further and we can do more stuff. So if you like what we do, hit the subscribe. And uh, please always uh, comment. Make nice comments. Please always comment on there because we enjoy reading those and I, I really enjoy answering those two if you have questions. Okay, thanks very much and I'll look forward to seeing you in some of my other videos. You take care. Bye-bye.